Welcome to our video series on generative AI. I'm Kevin Boyd, the CIO at the University of Chicago, and I'm very pleased to have with me today Professor Bo Lee. And Professor Lee and I are going to be talking about privacy and ethics in the context of generative AI. Very exciting topic. Thank you, Kevin. Thrilled to have you here. So um, to start off, maybe you could explain why data ethics and foundational to the development and application of AI technology. Yeah, definitely. So as we all know that currently people say data is the oil of the society. They have powered a lot of applications, like including uh, financial, healthcare, autumn striving, et cetera, et cetera. However, on the other hand, we can see that data has brought us a lot of like security, privacy, ethics concerns as well, because the data usually is high dimension in our world, and also they could have noise, and the label could be noise, and data itself could be noise, and the data collected from real world could be biased, depends on where and how you collect. Actually, those fundamental issues of the data will lead to potential privacy ethics issues of the trained model, trained platform, trained pipeline. So this way, we really need to understand and care about uh, how we can be aware and uh, mitigate potential uh, like uh, ethics uh, privacy issues of the data. So what would you say are really the most pressing privacy and security challenges facing AI today, especially you know, building on what you're talking about with uh, personal and yeah, yeah, exactly. Good question. So basically, for current uh, data in real world, especially, it's very hard to uh, guarantee that all the data we get is fair. For example, uh, and uh, like we can, we need to protect the privacy uh, sensitive information of the data. But usually, we know we have use a lot of data to train, say, our large foundation models and multimodality models. So it's really hard to make sure every data trained in the be protected or encrypted. So I would say that one of the most uh, challenging uh, challenge of the data is that the high dimensional, the uh, noisy in uh, noise in the data, and the like unbalanced collection of the data. When you say high dimensional, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So the data itself, for example, a uh, natural language we have. So this, like it's really diverse and it's uh, like belong to different domains and cover different topics. And you also have different tones. Like all these like dimensions make it very hard to regulate and capture and uh, basically verify their privacy, their ethic uh, guarantees. Okay. Interesting. So in the context of AI, like are there ways that data should be ethic ethic collected and used? Would you say that there are specific principles that should be followed? Yeah, there have been several principles. For example, from the application driven, like people say, say for example, for healthcare domain, like we should remove information or from the regulation perspective, there are a lot of regulation like GDPR and other EU Act, etc. to tell us what's uh, like a safety, privacy perspectives and we should be care about. But you can imagine since Again, like the high dimensional and the unstructured nature of lots of data and the multimodality nature of data, it's really hard to make sure they satisfy all these constraints we give, and also very hard to audit these types of uh, like uh, constraints. So that's again become very challenging. Yeah. Uh, would you say that there are ways that the to train these models could lead to unfair outcomes and like are there ways that bias gets introduced into these models? Definitely, yeah, unfortunately I would say. So we have done a lot of research along this line. For example, we look at most capable model currently like GPT-4, GPT-3.5 recently, and then we uh, find that indeed the model could be bi very biased. And uh, we actually con con uh, conduct a systematic study the different stereotype bias and different like sensitive information, like how uh, biased they could be. First of all, we find they could be very biased. Uh, and the second of all, very interesting, they can be overkilled as well, because people as as trying to fix the bias issue. And then one interesting example is that recently we evaluated with Dali 3, and then we actually uh, query the uh, like the uh, like the model to say, give me some pictures of uh, computer scientists, and coming out the result is like mostly mostly female. Very surprising, and it's kind of a lot of people have like discovered related phenomena. It's like a little bit overkill uh, in terms of the fairness. So we have to do a very good balance. Yeah. Interesting, and um, I think uh, Google's had some challenges with bias uh, in yes. their Gemini engine yeah. recently, haven't they? That's another example of the overkill, I would say. Uh, yeah. Interesting. 
Um, I think it's safe to say that fairness in AI is critical. Are there things that can be done um, to ensure that AI models make decisions that are fair and equitable? Mm, it's a little bit hard because the model is uh, powered by data. If the data have noise and uh, like bias or things, it could lead to, say, unfair decision or uh, like uh, unethical decision potentially. So that is a potential big issue of uh, researchers from academia industry and uh, people are getting along and trying to uh, discuss and have benchmarks, have methods, uh, have mitigation approaches, even like a certification, theoretical guarantees to help um, like uh, regulate the, like, uh, the model and the audit model to make sure the decision is uh, like fair as much as possible. So continuing in that same bit, sometimes we talk about transparency. Mm -hmm. And transparency challenge with some of these AI models, where sometimes it seems to produce, depending on the context, very meaningful or, or accurate results, but sometimes the how, mm -hmm. the, the why, seems like a, a black box. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about how developers can make their AI systems more transparent, more understandable? Yeah, very good question. So transparency has been all, uh, another word like explainable AI has been a long like a trajectory. Uh, lots of people are devoting a lot of effort there. And uh, I would say there have been good progresses. It's still a long way to go because the model currently, especially when the model become larger and larger and there are more complicated uh, uh, like uh, internal connections inside. So it's really hard to completely open the model as a white box. But basically, currently, uh, when we do expandable AI, we have different levels like on the data level, like which piece of data lead to certain decisions. And there have been lots of uh, like analysis here called the data explanation or data valuation. And going toward, uh, onwards, we have like model level, like the people have been looking at, say, the internal connections, activations of the neural etc. and try to understand. And uh, currently with large language model, foundation models, you can also ask the model to explain themselves for their decision and their predictions. That's also great. But also be careful that the model's explanation itself could be biased again. So it becomes a very interesting loop. And when you ask the model to explain it, um, is that typically reliable? Is, is that a typical answer? Uh, yeah, I would say yes or no. So we have to about the queries for how to uh, like explain and say if we directly say why you make this de decision it will be more or less like model could hallucinate and makes up some evidence for his own decision but we could ask particularly for certain component and certain angles and uh, like uh, ask about certain evidence like ask whether the model uses evidence or not like give more choice to guide the model. And this way, so sometimes the model can explain it like in a more reliable way. But I would say this being like finalized as a principal way yet. So a lot of things to explore. Interesting. Um, can you talk a little bit about the concept of informed consent as it's applied to AI? What are the challenges this presents for large scale data collection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So for large-scale data connection, currently uh, we have pipeline, like a, a certain like a finalized pipeline from the industry and academia perspective, like people agree like we should clean them and we should use model to clean them, we should use uh, like human annotation clean them, and then we uh, should have certain evaluation uh, like model benchmarks to again verify and co get consensus on how uh, clean or how uh, fair the data is. But uh, essentially, I would say um, everyone has their slightly different principles and uh, goals. For example, recently one of our uh, work is that we pass through all the AI-related regulations and uh, uh, like a company model ethics, privacy, security, uh, etc. And we find that every company has slightly different focus in terms of the categories, in terms of the strengths of the privacy, ethics, security. So I would say still currently people have their own principles and hopefully we can reach certain uh, like points that everyone agree on certain like uh, uh, levels and will like a joint effort to have uh, like a more uh, agreement over different uh, uh, areas, domains and uh, like uh, academia uh, industry, yeah. So that potentially also gets into issues of mm. you know, the data that's being used to train them. 
is it is it actually in the public domain? Is that one of the challenges that uh, some of these models have today as well? Yeah, very good point. That's indeed another challenge in terms of the model IP issues that uh, there have been a lot of, I would say, lawsuits and discussions on that already. Um, I think that's indeed one uh, like uh, challenge. On one hand, uh, there are a lot of like uh, IP protected data. Uh, we should we cannot use them directly train open models. It's and if we don't protect those data, uh, then you can see uh, it will cause societal issues about privacy, about IP, uh, you know, protection for like human who actually pay a lot of effort to create those uh, like product and data. So yeah, we do need to like address it as a challenging point. Interesting. Um, so thinking about sort of broad society feels like everyone. There are more and more potential mm -hmm. impacts. Um, are there ways that you can help to ensure that the benefits of AI are distributed equitably, fairly, and that we minimize the potential harm of AI? Yeah, that's a very challenging question. I think that's all like um, my research mainly focused on. I think eventually everyone hope we can have uh, we can have a way to ensure the benefits and the like advantage of ai to different domains and we hope we can provide guarantees or verifications for that for example for terms driving we don't we are not satisfied say oh this car is 98 safe in this city we have to give guarantee like the lower bound of the like risks or like a little higher bound uh, upper bound of risk or lower bound of accuracy or things like that but i think we have not been there yet because the models are keep developing and uh, you know every day we have new features and new capabilities of model and whenever they have a new feature new capability there is another level of risks and we need to be aware and be uh, like a uh, try to mitigate. Therefore, we are still in kind of like, a, I would say, from the attacker and defender perspective, like the cat and the mouse, to develop and protect and the red teaming and then again protect. I think eventually, hopefully, we'll achieve certain equilibrium. Uh, I don't know how long it will take, but I, I, I think we are making good progresses. So, so you raised sort of an interesting question there. So um, as each of the large uh, uh, yeah. providers, the, the Google's uh, open AIs come out with these new models. I understood you correctly. What you're saying is we shouldn't assume that whatever privacy protections, guardrails mm. were in place in their private, or, sorry, in their prior model mm. exist in the in the new model. Is that fair? Uh, I think the two for one is we cannot assume that because after you fine tune the model or you uh, like update the model, some feature could keep or loose and uh, we don't know. And second of all, we even cannot assume model will be safer and more like a fair, etc. Because in our past study, uh, which is a platform called Decoding Trust, we actually find that uh, surprisingly, GPT-4 is more vulnerable than 3.5. Like mm -hmm. uh, to when you give this uh, like red teaming or like adversarial probing, and the potential reason is also understandable in the sense that you know indeed GPT-4 is more capable in terms of instruction following, etc. In this way, if you have a little bit you know adversarial misleading uh, info in your system plan, user plan, etc., then the model will immediately follow and then they become more vulnerable. And uh, we find that they could leak private information more effectively than GPT 3.5. Yeah, so this paper also got the best paper award at last year in Europe. But this observation has been consistent over different perspectives we evaluated, like uh, fairness, uh, robustness, ethics, uh, like uh, privacy, uh, etc. So I think we need to be aware of that. Interesting. You mentioned red teaming a couple times. Our audience, what red teaming? Is. Yeah, I realize that. So I think for red teaming, that we try to understand the vulnerabilities or uncover the weakness of the models. So we put on like a wet hat and then try to say we generate different attack strategies and give different adversary capabilities and try to prop the model and see whether it will make mistakes, uh, whether it will lead to potential consequences before it actually happens in real world. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so thinking about the future, um, what would you say are some of the key challenges or opportunities in thinking about ethical and safety? Are there some things that the academic community 
can do to help? Yeah, definitely. So first of all, I think from the fundamental perspective, we do need to understand, for example, from theoretical point of view, why the model make uh, like these types of issues in terms of ethics, privacy, security, and uh, whether there is a fundamental trade-off among those perspectives. Sometimes we find if the model is more robust, it will be you know more uh, like uh, private, which is good, but it could be less accurate. So whether those trade-offs are fundamental or not, so that we know whether we can achieve uh, the best of all the words. So that's also something we are uh, working on, and I see a lot of groups are uh, paying uh, like great effort on it. And on the other hand, like uh, how we can like to the uh, generate the like uh, the challenging data to prop the model and understand the vulnerabilities of it. So currently we know a little bit, but I think there are still discovered yet and after that eventually we want to look into definitely based on the vulnerability we found how we can mitigate them and this is again very challenged uh, so challenging so basically i think there are a lot of interesting things to explore but eventually i think as you just mentioned we hope to reach the point that we can give certain guarantees of the model fairness ethics so that others can uh, like be confident to use the model so i would say currently we have developed a lot of models but to deploy them in real world is still a challenge and uh, the gap between uh, development and deployment is the safety and ethical privacy concerns that we need to be able to be confident about them and then we can safely deploy them in the world. Very interesting. So many considerations about uh, safety. Yeah, exactly. Professor Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate thank it. You. This was interesting. Uh, very interesting. Thank you for having me today. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this uh, segment about ethics and privacy and generative AI. We hope that you'll join us for more of the segments in this series. I'm Kevin Boyd, the CIO at the University. Thank you.